Many say the study of the law is difficult. I can testify, at least, that it is not easy. But there are these gentlemen and ladies who make first class in the study of the law. How do they do it for a subject or a course or a program that is difficult? At least not easy. So get ready to be inspired. If you have ideas about pursuing a degree in law, this is the law. It's your legal lights, it's your help law. I'm Samson Ladi and Yanini. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is the law, it's your legal lights, it's your help law. And this afternoon, we are having a conversation with law students who have graduated with first class honors. Some of them will tell you themselves what it is that they, they got to get a first class. And you'll be shocked. Here in the studio, I have Nahiza Amin Gombila. You may have seen her, she's been celebrated all over on social media as the valedictorian for the 2022 class from the UPSA Law School. Thank you very much for making time to join us. Thank you very much. Great. All right. Did you hear, um, Nahiza? I don't think we heard you. Thank Good you afternoon. very much. All right. Okay. Um, also, <clears throat> here is a Cephas. Dapuri. Sefas Dapuri is also a first class honor student from the King's University College. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Great. Uh, Sefas, speak up. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. And right here also in the studio is Achu Dogbe. He's also first class honor student from the University of Cape Coast. Thanks for making time to join us. Thank you for having me. Sir. Right. Joining us uh, via uh, Zoom, uh, uh, Martin. Wana Ang from the uh, KNUSD Faculty of Law and Emanuela Alo Anan, also from the University of Cape Coast. We have Clara Opokubwachi who will join us in the second half of this conversation. Uh, she is a 2021 uh, graduate from the uh, Kath University College with first class honors as well, and she is now in the law school. She may have an advice or two for these ladies and gentlemen who at the moment as we speak are preparing and dreading the entrance exams. I doubt these first class students will dread the entrance exams. Tell me you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you do? Oh, come on. We look forward to it. You're looking forward to it. Yes, right, yes. right, okay. Once again, thank you very much for making time to join us. Um, uh, Martin and uh, Emanuela, are you with us? Yes. Great. Hello, Martin. Yes, please. We are with you. Where? Martin, you need to unmute your mic. Yes, I can hear you. Great, great. Good to hear you. Good to hear you. So um, let's start. Ladies first. Um, Emanuela, how does it feel? to graduate first class. Okay, first of all, I want to say a very good afternoon to your viewers. Mr. Yenini, graduating with a first class from University of Cape Coast is not easy. It is a great <laughs> achievement. That's right. I think I'm proud of my whole family. I think they are all proud of me, my friends, everyone. That's right. We are and all proud of you. I'm sure by the end of this conversation, thank you, thank you. By the end of this conversation, we'll get to know whether the law is indeed difficult and how we're able to make it. Great, yeah. great, great. And when we put your flyers up, there are some people who could identify some of you, um, Emanuela, you know, Nahiz, uh, Nahiza and also Dapuri and Achu, because you were on the law challenge, you know, 
and they were excited to see you. So, uh, Martin, tell us, um, you are also a student leader at the KNUST uh, Law Faculty, right? How did you make it, yeah. combining student leadership and being able to graduate first class honors? All right, thank you very much for the opportunity and a good afternoon to your case So, I mean, can you have a whole of law that is needs the first class, it's not easy, and more to the point, combining students and justice, because um, for me, I entered a KMS institution, the LSE president that I've known, the teacher, and graduated with first class, but that is not to say, I mean, they were not to say, but I mean, it's a personal decision that I made since I entered the faculty of law. You will see by the time I graduated, graduated a first class and in law, and so I went towards it. All right. Okay, so you hold it there. I'll come back to you. It's good to know that this was planned. This was like a project for you as an agenda to get to first class. Nahiza, was it the same thing? Naziha. Uh, Naziha, Naziha. <laughs> was it the same thing? Okay, so if Emanuela and Martin are saying that from UCC and KNUSC it's difficult to make a first class in law, then we can imagine UPSA given the fact that no one has made a first class in law. Okay. So in UPSA, I would say it's two times difficult. Okay. So it's two times difficult because in your case, you are the first. Yes, please. Not just the first lady or girl, but the first. The first ever to get a first class. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's interesting. How does it feel? And I have seen that some of you, and especially you, have seen that there's been quite some celebration on social media <laughs> for you. How does it feel? quite exciting it's a dream come true finally because i've always wanted to get that first class and finally i'm seeing it coming true mm. and this was not how i expected it to come because i didn't think there would be all the social media hype but then it came with all the social media hype and i can only say it's a blessing from god great great <laughs> are you something yes um you are with uh emanuela yes at cape coast yes so is that what you planned when you entered the school? Okay, so like Ella, well, it's UCC. You don't plan to uh -huh. first. <laughs> Why? Why is it that you don't plan? Because it's UCC. It's, it's not something you, it's something you can only aspire to be. It looks like the more you work hard at it, the more the school keeps pushing in. Mm. And you know, every level gets tougher. So like Martin, I'm also a student leader. I was a former president of the Law Students Union. Okay. I had to combine that and also schoolwork. So I more like did not expect to be a first class student. But I, like Martin said, I'll be a president, I'll be a first class. And I thought that was when the thing changed. I wanted to be and I did. It was an agenda, but you didn't think it was possible I because didn't you think combined with student leadership. Yes, I didn't think it was possible. Mm. But okay. it was an agenda. So we'll get to hear the stories of how to be able to make it. And uh, as we celebrate you, we want to, you to inspire people because there are many people who are looking forward to uh, chart this path. But they have heard the stories over and again that it's so difficult to do the law. Yes, uh, Sefas Dapuri, what do you say? All right, sir. Thank you very much for inviting us. Well, the law... <laughs> It's actually a program that requires so much time. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's the right way to use. <laughs> <laughs> it requires so much time and it requires so much um, investment of time. Let me put it again. Um, it's not something that you can just get on an easy platter, especially from the faculty level like this, with respect to programs requiring reading you may forget some of the things. You have to read them consistently. You have to repetitively repeat all the things that you have read. And then sometimes you feel like giving up. And then you have to encourage yourself, get up again, read in the midnight. And the most interesting parts are when you enter into the exam hall, 
forgetting some of the cases and remembering the facts and the whole. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a nutshell, it's not actually an easy course. Right. It's not actually something that you can sleep and get. I know other courses too, if you sleep, you can get a first class. But law requires extra move. Law That's requires right. an extraordinary strength and then an extraordinary effort to be able to make it up to that level. Okay. And then, actually, if you sleep, you might even miss it. Not even making any class. That is good. So making a good class is one side. That's and right. And making a first class is on another level. All right. Uh, thank you very much. So if you're joining us, this is the law. It's your legal lights. It's your help law. And I'm having a conversation with um, law students who have graduated first class honors and are getting ready to get into the law school proper, so to speak. Now, Achu, um, tell us, why do you think people say it is a difficult thing to study the law? They are right, are they? To some extent, they are. So it started with the hype. When you go to the courts and you see what lawyers do, right. you get intrigued because half of the time you, are, you do not understand what they say. So it started with the hype. And then I think after the election petition, it looked like the courts came into our rooms. That's right. And everyone started. Maybe this is a time I think I should read law. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is something I think I, I can do. This is something I want to be a part of. Right. So flowing from that, you get a lot of people interested in doing and reading the law. Right. But yes, it's difficult to some extent to read the law because of the dedication, the time. It's a jealous lab. Now, just hold on. I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'm going to um, Ella, Emanuela. Um, you had prompted us on this line first, whether to tell us whether it is difficult or it is not. I dare say you disagree that it is difficult. Exactly. I don't think it's difficult. Really? I think, yes, <laughs> I think when it comes to comprehension, it's not difficult, but it's the workload. Please, please just, hold, just hold it there. When you say it's not difficult, I don't understand because, for example, you are doing, um, say, just one course, say constitutional law, uh, say you are doing uh, legal methods, about how many cases minimum will you be required to read, try to memorize, and be able to use in your exam? Oh, more than 100. Uh -huh. It depends. More than 100. Right. That's why I said, when it comes to comprehension, it is not difficult. But when it comes to the workload, because with law, every sentence is a principle. Mm -hmm. And b before you can get that principle, you need to read cases. And the annoying part of the study of law is that you can read the whole case to get to the bottom and they will tell you that oh this position has been changed <laughs> that is the annoying thing about law but other than that i don't think it is difficult when it mm. comes to the comprehension all right because you can explain it to the layman and they are able to understand mm. but when it comes to the technicalities the effects and other things you have to put in it's very time consuming and as i truly rightly said it is a jealous lover so you can't do law with other things. You can't do law as a part-time program if you really want to excel at it. Yeah. So that's what okay, I think. Okay, so uh, that's uh, Manuela uh, sounding uh, some warning or caution uh, to those of you who want to pursue it as part-time. When the, when the law school authorities and others say that doing it part-time is almost impossible, um, sometimes you, you, you argue with them. Well, some have been successful at doing it part-time. But the question is, um, how much can they show, really? That's, that's what she's, she's referring to. Yes, Martin, um, do you disagree with um, Ella when she says it's not difficult, but it's just a question of the workload? Yes, Martin. Yeah, um, do you disagree with uh, Emanuela when she says that it's not the case that is difficult, but it is the workload. Okay, thank you very much. Um, to some extent, I do disagree because um, for the study of the law, finding your feet 
in the first year is mostly very, very difficult because you meet a lot of first year students and then they complain about the work you the teachers and the teachers. But aside that, once you are able to find your team, I think that it is not difficult from that point. It just requires your um, other commitment. And like I said, it, once you find your seat, it's now dependent on you because the dynamics of the individual person are individual. So, so once you have decided to commit yourself to it, you see that it is very easy from that point. But finding your seat is where the problem is. Okay. So I'm going to come back to you and to see, in fact, if your disagreement is properly grounded. Well, when you put, they say when you put uh, 10 lawyers in a room, you are likely to have 10 different views on one small law. But I'll return to you and ask you, for example, if you take, say, thoughts, you do thoughts, how many cases are you reading at least for your thoughts and hoping to pass? And why would you say that you disagree with her when she says it is about the workload? You, do, you, you did uh, criminal law. Um, criminal law, how many cases did you have to read? And give us an idea so we'll know whether it is true that uh, it's not about the workload. Now, because uh, uh, Naziha, yeah, Naziha, you will leave us shortly. Let me bring uh, a little bit of attention to you now. Do you agree or disagree that it is about the workload and not exactly about the fact that the law is a difficult thing to, to study? Okay, so I personally have a different view even when it comes to the workload and everything. But before that, the word difficulty in itself is relative because I believe it depends on the person in question. And so a person who has much interest in that subject matter would find law easier compared to someone who is reading law in fulfillment. Your interest doesn't change the workload. The fact that you are interested from birth doesn't change the workload, right? But then the moment you are interested in something, it becomes a driving force for mm -hmm. you to push to work hard. So irrespective of the workload, you will still be motivated to work hard to be able to make it. I'm sure none of you here will, tell, will be able to tell me that you didn't lose sleep. <laughs> Did you have to lose sleep? Yes, many times I had sleep. Many sleep. times. Yes. Please. So it's difficult, isn't it? Even if you are passionate about it. It is intense. It is demanding. There are certain things that can make it less difficult on you as an individual. Mm. And, yeah, but then, basically, I don't really think it is that difficult that any person <laughs> cannot really do it. All right. Provided mm. the person is ready and prepared to learn. Right. The person has interest in law, and then the person has the right support system. Right. And the person would be able to read law. So... Speak to your friends. There are many girls, many ladies who are interested in, you know, charting this path and to become lawyers. They are looking to some of you as their inspiration. What will you tell them in, in your typical day on campus? How do you do it to overcome this difficulty and workload that kept you losing sleep? Okay by finding good mentors for themselves who would motivate them to do better by trying to emulate the habit of these mentors aspiring to be like them and even better for when you have a good mentor then you always want to please that mentor so then you are motivated to learn very hard to make it to tell that mentor that indeed you have made that person proud so i think one of the ways is to find good mentors for yourself and then also we should take to reading full cases rather than reading head notes because... Please say that again. <laughs> we should take to reading full cases... Say that cases again. <laughs> ...rather than reading head notes because from my experience, I've noticed that... First explain what are head notes and why do you say don't read head notes but read full cases? Okay, so head notes are basically some summaries of the entire... Um, case. Okay. It doesn't contain the full judgment. So when you read the head notes, you're not able to appreciate the decision of the judge because it's just a summary. So, for example, if we take the 2012 uh, election petition case, 
there's a judgment which is about 500 pages or a bit more. But there's a summary that you can get which is about two pages or less, right? That simply tells you this is how somebody won the election, okay. right? Someone was declared the winner. But you don't know how they arrived at that decision. That's why you say you should read the full. Okay. Read all the 500 pages rather than two pages of the summary. <laughs> okay, I'll admit that reading the whole 500 page can be quite difficult and then time consuming. But then also there are certain techniques you can adopt to be able to um, reduce the quality of time you spend on reading a particular case. I, for one, the more you read cases, the less time it takes you in reading the next case because then it becomes a habit. Mm. So if today you use one hour to read a case, you realize that the next time you use 30 minutes to read a case because it becomes a habit. Okay. And when reading cases also, there are certain things you should look for. The facts, the issues, the holding, the rule, the analysis analysis and so you are supposed to look out for those things so in the 500 page judgment you don't necessarily need to read the full thing look out for the issues look out for the whole then look out for the reasons why the reasons the judge gave all right right so typically your life on campus briefly and before you take leave of us typically your life on campus do you have to sacrifice a lot of things because we say when you go to the university, allow the university to go through you as well. Do you have to sacrifice a lot of things because you are a law student? Okay, there were some times I had to sacrifice certain things, but there were times also I told myself that I was going to combine both. I wasn't going to lose out on certain things. And so I, I was also a student leader. I was the vice president of the Law Students Union. And Interesting on you guys around here. <laughs> I managed to combine my studies of the law fairly with my duties as vice president. There are times I did go out, but then I knew which events to go for and what events not to go for. So it wasn't just every event that I would show up because there were times I had to focus. I had mm. to sit and then focus. And there's pressure about religious activities. On campus. Yes, your friends want you to show that you are committed as a, as a religious person. So that, what, what do you do? That I did fairly well. Okay. Anytime it was time for prayers, I'd stop studying at the library and then go to the mocks, pray, come back. It doesn't take so long. All right. So, mm -hmm. but that's, I don't think my religion played a role in... When you say mentors, day. are you talking about your teachers or colleague students or you're talking about lawyers because you are reading law? Oh, they all served as good mentors from your students to your lecturers to even people you see on the television, people who speak on law programs, they have all served as good mentors. All right. And sometimes your students can even be your best mentors, your colleagues, because it's much easier learning from them and much easier relating to them. Mm. And sometimes they are really smart. They can be really smart. And so it's, it was nice. I personally study from most of my friends. My seniors were good mentors to me. But they, I was always studying from them. They were like my mentors. All right. <laughs> All right. OK. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, actually you tell us about your typical day? in school and things that you must give up because you had to lose sleep to make a first class. Again, because you're also a student leader. All of you guys, I'm thinking about you guys. How, how did you just do this? Okay, so being a student leader is not, I think to me it's the hardest job for now on earth because in running a leadership of a law student union, we are trained to be opinionated we are trained to advance our views. We are trained to speak out. Then you stand that you want to represent the views of every other law student. And that is where it begins. Because in a typical decision, you have every law student wanting to contribute. Mm -hmm. Meaning a simple decision could take forever. Mm. And that eats into your time. As a leader, you have to be present. That eats into your time. You have to liaise with the faculty. It eats into your time. You have to travel. It eats into your time. So what I do is, because I know I do not have time, I make sure I take the law as 
something fancy. So I carry my phone along. I read cases when I travel. All right. I read cases when I'm sitting and eating. So when you are using your phone, yes. where someone may think that yes. you are just using phone rather than studying, you are actually studying. I'm actually reading a case. Okay. And thankfully, I'm not a social media fancy, so I use my phone to read cases. All right. I used to read news articles, everything related. So I make my learning more casual because it's the only time I'll get ever a three-hour journey to Accra. Was it a decision not to get entangled in social media too much or at all because of your program? Well, I knew there would be sacrifices. Like Naziha said, I chose a mentor that I could see, the head of legal in University of Cape Coast. And I noticed the time he spent mm. on social media, and I thought I should mimic that. He spent less time, and I thought I should mimic that. So I created enough space mm. to study. Yeah. Right. So she was talking about reading cases and reading in full and not reading the head notes. You may have heard me say that before. Um, why is that important for someone who wants to study the law for their success? Okay, I think it's very important. So before I entered the law school, I heard that advice from Professor Mensa Bonsu. Okay. Professor and, Henry Tamensa Bonsu, yes, now Justice, yes, Justice of the of Supreme, Supreme Court. Yes. Mm. I did not understand that. So when I entered into the law faculty, I realized that to write an exam question properly without being trained on how to write a proper paper, it takes reading because that's the unconscious learning you, you take in when you read cases in full. It teaches you how to spot issues, how to apply laws to facts, and how to arrive at a conclusion. That is a typical training you get when you read a case in full. And that is why I would always advise that the cases are read in full. Right. Uh, we're taking a very quick break, but uh, uh, Naziha Amin Gombila, are you not coming from a privileged background where you said like you need the support systems and so the support systems were there. So it's probably not the same for your sisters that you are inspiring this afternoon who want to do law. Okay, by support systems, I didn't just mean financial support, but then I also meant the institution you found yourself in, how well your lecturers were able to sacrifice their time for you and the quality of books you had in your library. All those things come into play to make you that good law student. Right. But uh, before you came to the university, UPSA, did you think about this or it, it was was it like a childhood dream okay so reading law was actually to fulfill my parents dream of me becoming a lawyer but then it wasn't forced on me i didn't have a problem with that because i had always been good with the reading subjects and then numbers had always been my weakness so when they said to me that they would want me to be a lawyer, I didn't have a problem with that because that was okay. indeed my field. So what did you do in the secondary school? Um, general arts, please. So I did government, history, literature, and CRS. They say these are the best courses to do to <laughs> yes. read law. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, which school were you in? Accra Girls. Accra Girls. Yes, okay. Proud Accra Girl. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So we take a quick break. We'll be right back and we thank um, Naziha Amin Gombila, who is the valedictorian 2022 class um, of the UPSA uh, School of Law. She obtained first class honors and her CGPA was 3.72. Did you hear that? Okay, we'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is the law. It's your legal light. It's your help law. I'm your host, Samson Ladi Ayanini, and this afternoon um, we're having a conversation with uh, law students who um, have braced the odds and made first class. And surprisingly, I'm finding out that almost all the students I'm having a conversation with were student leaders as well. Um, so they, they combine their studies with student leadership, uh, starting with uh, Emanuela. Uh, Alo Anan, who was also a student leader at the University of Cape Coast, and her CGP uh, PA was 3.8. Uh, 
you guys, uh, you don't know what I'm thinking, eh? You guys have really done well. Uh, Cephas Dapuri, King's University College, also had a 3.8. Um, Naziha, I mean Gombila, we just spoke to, and uh, she just left us a while ago. She had 3.72. Uh, Clara Opoku Bwachi, who is just joining us, who graduated in 2021 from the Kath University College, uh, made 3.72. She is now in the law school. Let me welcome her. Thank you for making time to join us. Thank you for having me. Great. And uh, Achu Dogbe, uh, University of Cape Coast. He was also a student leader. Uh, he made 3.7. Martin Wana and uh, also KNUSD Faculty of Law. Um, they have a different way of uh, calculating it. They call it the CWA of uh, 74. Uh, point zero zero. Now, let me go to Emanuela now. Um, so, Emanuela, I'm just discovering now that you two were a student leader and you combined uh, your studies with the study of the law. Uh, can you share with us what were some of the sacrifices that you had to make uh, to make this possible? Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, I was actually the academic head, head of the academic committee of the LSU. So it was something like, it was just my field. I didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything extraordinary because anytime I was involved in any activity, it would be something pertaining to academics. Okay. So that is it. Right. But you have to make a lot of sacrifices because if you know what you really want to achieve, sometimes you have to let friends go. I've had several instances where Friends tell me that I'm giving them in quote attitude because they come, they want to talk to me, and maybe I'll, I have a target for myself. I've set a target for the day, and I've not been able to reach that target. There's no way I'll leave that book and come and laugh with you. Great idea. Because I, yes, I have I have a family to to make proud and myself to make proud as well. So basically, these are the sacrifices and sleep. Is one of the important things I sacrificed. And I think studying law has actually changed my biological clock because even if I sleep for more than four hours, I wake up and my heart starts beating because I have wasted my day, I have wasted my time and everything. <laughs> mm, yeah, right, so I think right. th these are the basic mm. things I have to sacrifice. Interesting. Are there any things that you can relate uh, to, Dapuri? Mm. For student leadership, I was a justice of the SRC, and it related to coursework because I wrote judgments, controversial judgments, <laughs> <laughs> in relation to academic ways and then elections. So I had time to research into election petitions and then related ones. You'll be doing this in addition to your own exactly. studies, the cases that you have to brief by yourself exactly. for purposes of your exams, the reason you were sent to the school. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I had to do them sideline. I read my books very well, and I also made time, especially the midnight, to write my judgments, my long judgments. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I always aspire to be like Atuguba. Okay. JC, I see them. So I like his judgments and I like the way they are long. I normally read them. And I think reading judgments made me to understand how to answer questions. Because in law faculty, it's one thing to understand the law, the principles, and what you have to study. It's another thing to present it. That's right. If you don't present it well, then you have lost it. Mm -hmm. But reading these judgments, the long ones, will help you to know how to structure your work, how to even conclude, how to start in the middle, how to apply your law to your facts. So it has really helped. My student leadership helped a bit more. And then I want to say that, as for the sacrifices, much more, especially sleep, secondly, partying, free social media, and then number four, friends. Friends, friends. like Ella said. <laughs> exactly. Naturally, I'm a gamer. I like playing games before I went to law school. And when I entered law school, it has changed. I used to think I was addicted to gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I'm addicted to law. Mm. You don't have any choice. Than Which secondary addicted. school did you attend? Nandom Senior High School. Nandom. Yes. All right. You have to be addicted to law. 
you cannot be, you cannot serve two masters at the same time. Law itself is a master. And then <laughs> having habits is another master. Mm. You have to sacrifice some of these ones. Right. So if you have to study law, you just have to know that you have to make the sacrifice. You have to be consistent. You have to be disciplined. You have to carry capacity of time to law. No, right. Okay? Sacrifice it to make your first class or a better class. Thank you. Right. So uh, it may be difficult, but it is possible. Yes, it's very possible. Because that is why you guys are here with first classes. Right. Um, Clara, you are the senior here now <laughs> because you have moved on from here and you are in the law school, so to speak. Now, um, is this so to speak? That's really what it is. That's the real law school. They now are still burning the midnight oil so that they can write the ex entrance exams and pass and come join you. Um, what's, what can you, you know, associate with from the things they talk about, the things that you have to give up because of the law? Why must you give up anything because you're reading law? <laughs> well, you know where you're going. You know where you're coming from. So there are things you need to give up. There are things you need to let go. Mm. Um, there are things you need to sacrifice. Because if you see your future, if you can see your future, you see how bright and how far you want to go, you have to let go of some things. Yeah. Th does it include church and things? Because oh, yeah. sometimes we hear some of the law students are very religious, but some of them too, they will say, please wait. And people will say, well, they are not trying to be religious. And that's important as well. Um, it depends on how you see religion. Um, I believe you don't necessarily, although they say um, the garden of the brethren is great and all that, it doesn't have to affect why you are there. Because you realize that you are in the university to study, pass, and then move on with your life. You are not there for church. That's right. Yes. So if you decide to get into religious activities to the extent that it will affect your academic life, then you are not in purpose. And then that is what the Bible says. There is time for everything. So if you decide to focus so much on religion that you forget your boots, I'm sorry, you are disappointing God. But your development ought to be rounded. So studying the law at the same time, it ought to balance. Is that not, is that not what it should be? Well, it, it can balance. Mm. But um, when it comes to law, the skills have to differ. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So um, even before we go further, I should be asking you uh, a little later when we're about to wrap up. But let me ask you now so that you can help count them if there is something like that. Because as you listen to them, you will discover that they are still in the preparation. Um, even though they are first class guys, they still can't feel that it is a giving that they will enter the promised land. That's the law school. What do, you, what do you tell them? How did you go about it? Honestly, it is not a given. Because um, sometimes when you attain that first class, you attain the second upper, any other class, um, if you don't continue studying, complacency will set in. Right. And the moment complacency sets in, you are doomed. You think you know, so you won't read further. Mm -hmm. You think you know, so you won't research further. That is where the problem is. So you shouldn't let the first class get into your head. You shouldn't let any class get into your head. Maybe a third class, you think it makes you bad as a student. You shouldn't let it get into your head. It is done. It is over. After that, it is for everyone. We don't say you are from Legon, you are from Kenya, you are from Calf, wherever, so we are going to treat you differently. The questions are set for every single law student that decides to write. So you study hard. When you think you are getting so tired, you relax. That's one thing law students don't know how to do, relax. Uh, actually, relax. he's laughing. I'll ask him why he's laughing when he said relax. <laughs> you need to relax. You mm. need to breathe. Because if you give yourself that much pressure, the pressure can kill you. There are, there are some of the first class uh, students that we spoke to for this show, who said, please, I'm reading for Makola. Can you spare me? And then when we finish with Makola, then we can have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on everyone. Right. One thing I believe is you set time for everything. 
But if you think one thing is going to hinder that agenda, you let it go. Mm. So there are some who need to study frequently. Some would have to summarize the entire notes, summarize the summary, and then summarize the second summary again just to get it. Mm. And there are some who read once and then understand it very well. And then one thing is, People think you read and then that is it. Right. I believe in reading and teaching. Because the more you teach, the more you know. All right. So instead of just focusing on yourself, thinking because it's a fight, maybe they, they have just 550 slots here and there, you wouldn't share. But you forget that if you don't share, you lose. And then learning law, law itself, is, you can't be an island. So you have to make sure that you share, you teach. When you teach, you get to know more. Students will ask you questions. You get to research more and more. And then the more you teach, the more you know. That's a great one there. But <laughs> there are pressures on first class students, right? Because you made a first class, there's a certain pressure on you. How real is that? It's been, it's been a year since you left, <laughs> you know, graduated with first class how real is the pressure and how do you how do you treat it it's very real so real expectations expectations from parents from friends from families so with my parents they know me i tell them don't call me at this time mm -hmm. let's do it this way mm -hmm. let's do it that way this is how i'm going to do it so please if you have any expectation you hold on hold on some do it to please family but I know what I want. I know right. where I'm going. So I do right. it for myself. So you hold on. Mm. At the end of the day, you'll be proud. Because if I don't make myself proud, you can't be proud. Okay. At you, to you, because I said I'll come to you. Because you were, you were giggling <laughs> when she said, relax. That was advice to you. Relax when you're tired. You don't think you would relax, yeah? Okay, so you will. Until you are done with the entrance exam. Okay, done with the entrance exam. <laughs> Interestingly, because usually after the entrance exam, the news items that carry the day is that this first class student did not make it. Mm. This first class student did not make it. So the only time you get to enjoy a first class is when you're, on, when you're in the faculty. When it's time for Makola, you dread it. Because it looks like you're, you're looking at becoming a newspaper item for discussion right after the results are out or you enter. And that can be something that relax will not really do. Because you relax and remember, there's a newspaper publication waiting for you. Or there's Makola to go to. So you cannot relax. Mm. It's scary. Every, Ella said you wake up and you're scared. You're afraid. But everywhere, we, we say we keep a positive mind. So we're right. doing our best. We're studying. Great. Which secondary school are you from? Nungwa Secondary School. Nungwa Secondary School. How about, uh, yes, you? Fijai Senior High. Fijai. Um, Yes, Ella, which secondary school did you attend? I'll come to Martin and I have a question for him. Yes, Ella. Ghana National College. Great. Uh, so uh, they must be proud of you. Yes, Martin, uh, which secondary school did you attend? Hello. Unmute and speak, please. Yes, I said I went to St. Francis Xavier Junior Center. Great. Now, as you, you get ready for the preparation for law school, are you, in, are you in a certain state of apprehension? Uh, it's unfortunate you guys have to go through this. Um, our time, um, a decade and something ago, you guys were like automatic entrants. <laughs> like you are like special automatic entrants. <laughs> yes, tell me. Do you have apprehensions, and how are you dealing with that? Because you must have your mental health. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I must say that um, preparing for law school has been the most daunting uh, thing ever because at the faculty, I've never been this and uh, felt, felt this apprehension before. But um, you, you realize that you have studied all the courses, but you still be preparing and then it will dawn on you, what if um, you go there and you don't make it, what happens? And like 
uh, Sina Achu said, you either become a newspaper uh, for discussion or uh, you make it. But I am mostly consoled by the fact that, I mean, the questions that we are going to write over there are not anything different from what we have been doing at the faculty level. And with that particular faith and belief, I am hopeful and I'm of the conviction that what comes with me will still make it because we've been through it at the faculty. And then yes, this one time exam would not I mean bring us down. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, so I'm going to come to all of you to tell me what your goals are. Share with us what your goals are um, in the profession of the law. Um, we would normally open the phone lines by this time, but we have very li limited time to go. We can still open the phone lines for you to join us if you have a question or two. Uh, you're seeking some inspiration from uh, these guys. They can share something with you that we are hopeful uh, will help you. I believe that so far what they are sharing uh, from their personal experiences in their study of the law is encouraging you uh, to want to also uh, be an achiever. Uh, so starting with you, Martin, um, when we went to the law school, uh, Okujeto, Senior Okujeto, who is now with the Council of State, um, will come to our class and ask everybody and say, uh, so why are you here? What's your plan? And if you start speaking and say, you want to be for the downtrodden, and you say, please, can you revise and tell us why you are really here? <laughs> yeah, so what's, 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 the, what's the deal for you, studying law? Okay, thank you very much. I want to be of impact to the Ghana legal system by contributing my data um, in the way, in any way that I can through writing and uh, the legal practice to ensure that we have a better and a sustainable Ghana in the city. But more importantly, I also have um, international ambitions. I like international law so much, and so I hope uh, to pursue that to a greater extent even after the law school. Great. Yes, but I would also want to probably end up at the Supreme Court because I, uh, I like writing and I believe that I would be of great contribution to the Ghana Great, great. Thank you very much. And uh, I pray that uh, your prayer is answered. Um, Emanuela, tell us, what's, what's the deal? Um, often people say everything and they leave out the fact that, you know, practicing the law also means wealth. If you practice it well, you make good money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, if we practice them well, we'll make good money. And I don't think we'll pay this huge sums of fee just to settle for something less. Um, one of the people I really look up to in the legal fraternity is Professor Bateba Jesse Asimbeu. Great. I really like him because if you read his judgment, it's like you are in a lecture. He takes his time. So actually, I want to be a professor of law. Great. I want to give back to society. I want to come back and lecture at UCC Faculty of Law because right. I think I have to give back to them because they've been of very good importance to me. And I also want to be in the private sector. The public law is not my area. I don't know, but I want to be in the private sector. Mm. All right. Yes, basically that's so. Great, great, great. That's what I want to do. All right. Uh, and you started really very well. Uh, certainly, you will yes. get there. Um, Anthony, you're calling us from the OT region, is it? Yes, yes, please. Yes, Anthony, let's hear you. Um, I might say a very good afternoon to my seniors because I also aspire to be a law student. Um, I had admission last year to KU, but I couldn't go, and I currently teach. And my ambition is to be a lawyer. And this particular program, I have a friend at school who is Patrick. And uh, we are timing the program. But unfortunately, he's not able to join. So I'm recording it. I'll share with him. And I must be in relation to them. They have done so really well. Reading the law is not easy. Mm. I've been doing my own practice at home. I have mentors like you, Samson. 
um, Senior Martin and all that too. Um, I'm wishing them well for Makola and I pray that we join them very soon. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Um, there's someone else on the line? All right, um, let, let's, you hold on briefly for us. a very limited time. I want to hear all of them. Yes, Achu. Okay, so I also want to contribute my quota to the legal profession, and I'll venture into politics. Sometime. Contribute your quota to the legal profession <laughs> and venture into politics. Yes. Contribute your quota like what? <laughs> tell us, well, tell us the real deal. I want to write. Oh, you want to lecture too? I want to lecture too. Okay. I want to write. Yes, and mm. I want to practice. Like all right, all right. Okay, thank you. How about you? Um, yeah, academia, as everyone says. I love it. I love to teach. Clara, the teachers say there's no money in teaching. No. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But most of, the, most of the teachers of the law are practice, yeah. practices of the law, right? Practitioners of the law. So, like, they end from here and end from there. Okay. And um, one man cannot have one source of income. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But um, I would love to go into academia. Okay. I love writing. Right. I love teaching and helping people understand so that they can have things easy. Mm. So that is me. That is what I want to do. Professor. Okay. Right. Yes, Cephas. All right, sir. My ambitions, they are many. <laughs> they are many, but basically, I want to join the bench. I want to continue to... That was obvious from your admiration for Justice William Atuguba and reading his judgment. Uh, now we know that Ella is associated to Dateba. Uh, you, who is your favorite? Um, Acha CJ. Justice Acha. Yes. Far away. Far away. <laughs> great. Yes. Achu. Kwaman. Oh, great, 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 great. All right. Yes. So I would like to join the bench. I would like to write a lot, contribute. We're not coming to change the legal system. We're only coming to polish it up also contribute, revive the laws, and then make bigger um, impact to the legal system. Mm. Also, in terms of international level. The, the impact, does it include litigation like some of us do? <laughs> we get right. up every day. I, I'm, if I'm not going to court, maybe I'm in the office uh, drafting some legal documents or so. All right, so when it comes to impact, I believe in information. I believe in the information that you give out to society. If you look at senior Martin Pebble, Normally, he's hosted on a lot of programs on human rights. And then the information he gives out to the society, they are so important. Mm. And people are getting educated all the time. All right, so let me answer with respect to the international level. I want to do comparative studies. That is to say, be a justice here, and also study law elsewhere. Also ensure that I continue my studies in maybe other legal systems like Justice Ruedu, he was in Gambia as a justice and right. he was in Ghana, Ghana right. as well. So I would like to be like him and then also like Dennis Ajay, he's on international justice level. Justice Dennis Ajay, exactly. great. So he's on an international level at the same time in Ghana. That's my greatest You're ambition. quite a number of mentors, right? Exactly. <laughs> great. Um, our time is up. Uh, Martin, Martin, tell me, uh, who is your mentor in the... In the in the legal system, and w won't you litigate? Please unmute your mic. Yes, yeah, so um, my mentor is Professor Justice Datiba. Oh, so the two of you on Zoom, Datiba. Yeah, reading and NTT versus NG for the first time as a law student really inspired me. And Yes, I am into litigation, and even on campus here, we have uh, campus litigation. Right, uh, right. Of this. Thank you, thank you so very right. much. Thank so you. you have been watching the law. It's your legal lights. It's your health law, and I have been engaging Emanuela Alo Anan uh, from the University of Cape Coast, uh, Sefas Dapuri from King's University College, Naziha Amin Gombila the valedictorian, um, UPSA Law School, Clara Opokubwachi, who is in the university, who is in the uh, Ghana School of Law, and uh, she left the Kath University College a year ago, also with first class. Achu Dogwe is um, from the University of Cape Coast, and Martin Wana Ang from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Law Faculty. I'm Samson Ladia Nyanini. I hope you have been inspired as we celebrate these, um, 
guys who have braved, braved the odds to make first class in a difficult, not easy uh, program like the law. Have a good afternoon.